Welcome to the Miami Heat Zone Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Tyler Wallen. Guys, we're pushing up 4,000 subscribers. If you have not yet subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button, and thank you for all the support. So me and Amir from Team to Beat Miami Heat, make sure you guys go over to his channel. If you're subscribed to my channel, go to his channel, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and make sure that you guys comment under his video. So me and Amir, we are starting a new series called Miami Heat Chronicles. We're going to be having Miami Heat conversations. Today, we're going to be talking about the Jimmy Butler extension. Now, we all know that Jimmy Butler wants a max deal. There's a bunch of other teams now that are coming out of the, the woodworks, the Golden State Warriors, the Detroit Pistons, the Philadelphia 76ers, who are pretty much trying to put the ball in the Miami Heat's court because think about it. They're pretty much saying that if you guys don't pay Jimmy, we will. So, Amir, when it comes down to Jimmy Butler with him, you know, pushing 35 years old and he's only going to get older, you know, he's really not playing that many games. You know, some of the games, his agent even said he just doesn't even want to play. So if you're Pat Riley, if you're Mickey Harrison and the Miami Heat organization, do you guys give Jimmy Butler pretty much another $150 million contract with all the stuff that we know now while also trying to balance the roster and paying guys, you know, their own money with Duncan, Terry, Tyler, and Bam possibly getting another extension while also trying to put high-level role players around our best players? I mean, if I'm Mickey and Pat and – the Miami Heat front office. I'm not paying him the max today. So I completely agree with their their wait and see approach because in Pat Riley's presser, he basically said he had a conversation or whoever had a conversation with Bernie Lee saying, hey, Jimmy's been on this team for what, four seasons now? Or was it the fifth season last year? And he's missed 20 games or so every single season that he's been with the Miami heat, right? So availability has been a huge issue, not with just Jimmy Butler, but across tons of players in the Jimmy Butler build. So basically it was saying, Hey, like I'm assuming in the background, they know that Jimmy was taking some time off, not for serious injuries, right? They were allowing him to load manage, um, which to you, to your point, you mentioned this many times in other episodes that we filmed together, Dwayne Wade, Shaq, LeBron, like whoever it was in the past, didn't have that ability or flexibility, right? And these guys were superstars that helped the Miami Heat win championships. And so they were being really flexible with Jimmy. But I guess before this past season, they told Bernie Lee, hey, like we need Jimmy to be more available because last year we all know what happened. We lost a ton of clutch games. Like one, we were good in the clutch. Like that was one of our fortes is we did win a ton of games, but we also lost clutch games to the Hornets, to the Spurs, and to the Pistons. I'm not talking about this last season, two seasons ago. And because of that, we were a seven seed. Lost the first playing game, became the eighth seed. We went on our Cinderella run. But we weren't good enough to win at that point for multiple reasons, right? For availability, for having quality size, quality scoring off the bench. And that's something that, that needs to change, essentially, in their opinion. And Jimmy Butler is not providing that in the regular season right now. So because of that lack of av availability, I don't think it makes sense to give him the max contract because I mentioned this also in other videos, and I know you love the stat. Typically, like if you're a seventh or eighth seed, you're not winning a championship, right? All of NBA championships, since they've created an eighth seed in the 70s or so, top three seeds have won 94% of all NBA championships. This year might be an exception. A fifth seed has never won. And I know us Miami Heat fans are definitely rooting for the Dallas Mavericks over the Celtics, which is a disgusting thing to say out loud because obviously the Miami Heat and Dallas have somewhat of a rivalry, obviously playing each other in multiple championships. But um, it's really hard to win if you're not a top seed. And there's a correlation where Jimmy has been hurt or load managing, and especially this last season, load managing in games as you've coined where he wasn't trying in like 20 of the 60 games that he did play. Right. So not only is he missing 22 games, but in 20 of those other games, he's taking five shots. He's taking eight shots. He's being passive. He's not being aggressive. He's not playing defense. He's not in the passing lanes. He's not getting deflections or steals. Like we saw what an active, uh, enthusiastic, aggressive Jimmy Butler could look like specifically in the play in game against the Sixers before he got hurt. Like Jimmy was like, okay, it's playoff Jimmy time. Like that's, that's an actual thing, which is 
I think frustrating to see as a Heat fan because it's like, why couldn't you have done that five more times, like in five games, like in those twenty games that you load managed while playing? If you tried harder in five of those games, we would we would have been a four seed, and that matters. So, I think I agree with the Heat saying, "Hey, let's see what happens next year." Because one, you're aging, right? Your rim pressure like the times that you've been like scoring in the paint that's going down your field goal percentage is going down your scoring percentage is going down your steals are going down so that's an indication that like you're obviously getting older and father time always wins so i think it makes sense to say hey let's see if you can actually play more than 64 games which was two seasons ago the most jimmy butler has played for the miami heat Let's see if you could play 65 to 70 games. Let's see if you could be an all-star. Let's see if you could be considered for all NBA because that's what it's going to take for us to be a top. I don't even want to be greedy. I was going to say top four seed. That's what it's going to probably take us to be a top six seed because the East is getting better. Then we could revisit this conversation. Like if you're an all-star, maybe we'll give you the extension. So I agree with them. I think it makes sense to wait and see. Does he deserve it based on past performance? Kind of. Should we pay based on past performance? Yes and no, but in this case, no, not the max. He he didn't win his championships. He wasn't drafted on this team. He hasn't been on the team for 13 years like Dwayne Wade was. I don't want to, I don't like comparing the D Wade situation with Jimmy, right? Because we drafted him. He was on the team forever. He helped us win three championships. So yeah, he probably deserves more for the past, right? Versus what Jimmy Butler did for his past performance. Yes, and the biggest thing that Jimmy has to realize and the Miami Heat organization has to realize is that we can't win without him. And I think that's, like, the biggest thing. And the second thing is is that Jimmy and Bam aren't really the best scorers. So it's really hard to give a guy $150 million, max him out completely, and he can't really give you the scoring production as he gets older. So as we mentioned, that I know a lot of people, they always talk about Donovan Mitchell. You know, we've had Damian Lillard in the past. We've had Kevin Durant talks. Bradley Beal, and we're pretty much 0 for 7 when it comes to the stars. But like, I know that everybody wants Donovan Mitchell, but let's just say we can't get Donovan Mitchell because we can't wait all offseason for him. If he's not really going to communicate with Bam and the Miami Heat that he does want to come here, I can't sit around here and just wait for him all offseason and then risk out on even losing some of the you know, simple free agent guys that is out there. So when you look across the NBA, outside of Donovan Mitchell, who is your plan B if we don't get Donovan Mitchell? So based on people that are speculated to be on the block? Yeah, I mean, you know, DeMar DeRozan's out there. DeJounte Murray's out there. Even Trey Young is out there. I wouldn't mind a guy like Trey Young. I know a lot of people say that he's terrible defensively, but he's going he's, he's gonna to elevate your team on the offensive end. And I think that's one of the biggest things for the Miami Heat. We need a guy that's going to come in here and give us offensive production. Even a guy like Zach Levine, I, you know, even though he has durability issues, but who would be your plan B instead of Donovan Mitchell? Yeah, I love that you brought up Trey, because so I was going to do a series where I I had my plan B, plan C, D, E, F, G. (laughs) Like we we need to get to G because based on last season, you know, our our plan A was the only plan we had. And then, you know, even missing on guys like uh, Kelly Oubre, um, what's the dude's name? Uh, Christian. Christian, I love how you know exactly. Even though I don't love Christian Wood, but like still like someone that's 6'10", that could spread the floor, that could rebound, like protect the rim a little bit i know he's a head case he's been on like eight teams in seven years but even those guys like we missed out on so like we need multiple options i made a video a few weeks ago maybe a month ago saying my plan b initially was brandon ingram because he's on the trade block potentially it's not working out with him and zion he has been pulled out of fourth quarters in the final games of the regular season but most importantly in the playoffs which is not a good sign um i thought he would be a good fit because of what he can bring in terms of size. He's six foot eight, six foot nine. He was like coined the like KD light coming up, right? Similar type of build, similar type of player. Obviously he's not as elite in terms of scoring, but he was a three level scorer where you could, you know, get to the rim. He has a mid range pull up game and he can hit the three. Um, Not a bad defender, not a great defender, um, but neutral. So I thought based on his size, he could be a good fit next to Jimmy and Bam because if with him, we're not going to have to trade the farm like we would for Spida. So maybe we would trade Tyler Hero is the obvious choice, or it could have been Terry. But if we're able to keep either one of Tyler or Terry with Brandon 
Bam and Jimmy. I thought that could be a good spread in terms of positional pieces um, on on this roster. But because of his injury history, he's been he's been injury prone, missed a lot of games in the last few seasons, and he's really light and weak and fragile, like another player on our team, <laughs> mm-hmm. right? That Pat Riley mentioned. I, I think I want to shift towards um, Trey Young. And the reason why is because I hate Trey Young, first of all. Like, I hate his game. He's obviously a liability on defense. He has a high IQ to a certain degree, but, like, this generation of players, you know, they always call it the Steph Curry effect, take shots from half court, and, like, Luka does it, and, and he does it specifically in a few other players. But he takes shots that are just, like, from the logo when it's not necessary, right? Like, when it's not a heat check. So it's like a low percentage shot, right? So I don't like. But I'll say this: running. he's never had a coach or a team like the Miami Heat. So he's going to go to a one of the best coaches of all time, and he's going to be able to submit under Coach Spo, and he'll be able to flourish in a Miami Heat system that has lacked scoring. And like I said, I know that the whole shot chucking is an issue, but I don't see him doing that under Coach Spo in the Miami Heat. Yeah, definitely not. Like putting him in the right system, obviously would be beneficial for him. And again, he's a perennial all-star. Brandon Ingram, one-time all-star five years ago, four years ago, right? He's still young. He's only 26, Brandon Ingram, but one-time all-star. Trey has been an all-star, what, four times in his career? I can't believe he's only 25. He's only in his. He's only played six seasons. It feels like he's been in the NBA a lot longer, doesn't it? Like 12 yeah. years or so. But he's 25. He's averaged 29.6 points per game his second year, right? Then he averaged 25, 28, 26. His numbers were down a little bit last season, but still 26 points per game, 11 assists, one steal. Uh, What do you shoot from three? 37% last season. He's 35% career on nine attempts. So I like, I'm pivoting to him because he is an offensive system in his own right. He is a dynamic scorer. He could get to the rim. He's a better finisher than Tyler Hero by far. But that's what they don't understand, Amir, that people are complaining about the offense. Then we say, okay, well, then let's pivot to Trey Young. Oh, but the defense, the defense, the defense. I'm not worried about the defense because at the end of the day, Trey Young is here to get buckets that Tyler Hero can't necessarily get. If Tyler Hero was able to put out the offensive production that Trey Young was putting out, we could look past the defense. Why? Because Tyler Hero is raising the overall offensive floor of the team. But think about it. Look what Trey Young has been able to do with DeAndre Hunter, John Collins, and Clint Capella with the yep. lobs and the passing and the assists. Can you imagine now with an actual all-star and an Olympian, Bam Adebayo, and you have another all-star next to him in Jimmy Butler? Completely. And, I mean, I don't want to discount the the fluky uh, run to the ECF they had a couple years back. But to your point, with Bogdanovich, with Horder, with Capella, like with Hunter, he took that team to the ECF. How many times has Joel Embiid with Maxi, with Jimmy Butler, James with Harden. Harden, with all these pieces they're trying to add around him, like with Tobias Harris? How many times have they gone? Not even once. So that shows you how dynamic of a scorer he is. And I'm looking at their offensive rating. Um, they've been in like in the top 12 or even better the last four years, I think, let's see, they're number 12 this year, but they were like number five in offensive rating, the Atlanta Hawks, like a team that's like a play-in team, right? Eighth seed, ninth seed, whatever they've been the last few years, they're still a top offensive team. And so I know they say defense wins you championships, but not in this day and age, like the NBA is geared and it favors offenses. This guy can get to the line. This guy can hit the three. This guy can get to the rim this guy can shoot the mid-range more importantly he's one of the best playmakers in the nba like he's one of the best distributing guards in the nba as well as scoring so he's dynamic where you can actually pass and set up his teammates he's the number one lob threat in the nba he's had the most the most alley-oops have been to capella john collins and whoever else in the last three years so he can definitely with that pick and roll with bam at a bio like he can dominate like he can he could honestly help with the dunker spot, whoever that may be with Bam Adebayo and the pick and roll, pick and pop. Like he's going to set up his teammates, Jimmy Butler. He's going to demand that gravity and that attention. If you can keep Duncan Robinson 
as we probably are going to trade Tyler Hero for him and maybe even Terry Rozier or whoever it may be, like having your backcourt as Trey Young and Duncan Robinson, that opens up the floor for Bam and Jimmy to operate in that mid-range, in that post, in the paint. Because those are two guys that you don't want to leave open. And Trey Young is going to dominate when he could pick his poison, right? Playing pick and roll with Bam um, and then just finding Jimmy Butler on the block. It's going to be fun. Um, even though I hate him, he's a defensive liability, shot chucker, all that stuff. But with the right system and being on a team that can actually contend and being around veteran players like Jimmy and Bam Adebayo and Terry Rozier, let's say if we can somehow keep him, I think his attitude could change. So I think that's my plan B. I don't know why I had Brandon Ingram. Maybe Brandon Ingram's like a plan C or D at this point. I'm open-minded to either, honestly. I think we just need to make a big change, and I want that type of player, whether it's like a A player or, or a B player, if you will. We need some sort of A star or B star to shake things up. We can't just afford to, you know, replace Haywood when he leaves or Caleb with Torian Prince or a Tory Craig or whatever and say, hey, those are our changes. We're going to run it back again. So I don't think that's going to move the needle. Well, thank you so much, Amir. Thank you for coming on the show. Once again, guys, if you're subscribed to my channel, hit go to his channel, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Make sure that you guys comment under his channel. Let's get him to 2,000 subscribers before the next season begins. Thank you guys for everything, and we're out.